Salutations, everyone, and welcome back to Kaiserreich. Ah, a post Second Weltkrieg Kaiserreich. We're looking pretty good, but the Walschau Posen line modernized. Today, an express service originating from Walschau, Centralna, arrived at Posen, Maine, signaling the conclusion that Walschau Posen line modernization works as part of Poland's effort to modernize their aging railway system. The German province of Posen has traditionally held a close link with Poland, given its noticeable Polish population, as well as serving as a midway point between the Polish railway and the rail terminal in Berlin, which is a valuable asset to the Polish and German government alike. However, the railway line has been plagued by its aging infrastructure built in the late 19th century, lacking the repairs and modernization needed to support the faster, heavier, more frequent trains that have been running since the rise of Middle Europa. For the past few months, workmen have been working overtime to finish the modernization work quickly and demise, or minimize disruption. Railway lines along the Walshaw Posen line have been upgraded and modernized, reinforcing bridges and track sleepers with a, along the line as well as implementing modern signaling systems. The conclusion of the project is expected to bring Poland further into middle Europe by bringing Warsaw closer to Berlin. And success has undoubtedly brought the valuable experience of modernizing infrastructure shared by multiple nations. A fantastic, great success. As we're doing Reichsland, Lösungsstil, and uh, Emirate of Cyrenaica. Um, interesting. I got quite a while until then. Uh, I'm gonna maybe park half of our guys here, maybe? Here we go. Go ahead and have fun with that. But yeah, uh, we're, from here on out, we'll try to focus more on uh, the focuses for this path. I read a couple of these earlier. Oh, what is this? Com Commandeer ships and aircraft. Communard fighters. Tactical bombers, naval bombers, and improved destroyers we get. Huh. Interesting. To ensure that our occupied enemies can never start a third Valkyrie, we must ensure that they have no more heavy weapons cap capacity. We'll seize the ships and aircraft um, <clears throat> once operated by them and put them into our army's reserves and ban the production of new ones. If their militaries are never established, there will be merely small numbers of ground troops for border policing. Consolidation of Thuringia. For too long, Turingi has been shattered into numerous principalities with their own governments, which stymies economic growth of the region. Let's put our foot down in, over the unification of the states into one grand duchy, since intellectual property. Our enemy scientists have created numerous inventions and patented them. This intellectual property now belongs to us. The technological and scientific know-how now belongs to us. Patents will be seized, research will be harvested, designs will be taken and applied to German factories. or oh, in German factories, really. Uh, interesting. 50-year coal and oil leases. The dis resource deposits in the occupied zones could be used for the establishment of a military-industrial complex if they are returned to French and British hands, so we will seize them for ourselves. 50 years should be enough to profit from our enemies' uh, <coughs> uh, resources and root out their revanchist ambitions. Promote light industry. Uh, export of heavy industry products uh, from our occupation zones will be banned, and instead will promote leather goods, beer, wine, spirits, toys, musical instruments, textiles, and apparel, uh, uh, and apparel for export. Most of the new to the heavy industry in these territories and make it possible for them to swiftly rearm. And desyndicalization, which we read earlier. Or in the last time, really. Recruit collaborators? Uh, or, or orchestrate formation of new parties, as much, much as we might want to. We're going to simply leave the syndical states and declare that their job is done. We must leave them behind a stable political system which will not fall to radicalism again. Let's encourage the formation of new enduring political parties which will be able to succeed us and keep their country peaceful and compliant. Destroy resistance cells. Though the syndicalist armies have been broken, a handful of holdouts remain. Routine, retreating to the shadows, they are causing trouble in our supply lines and are sabotaging our desyndicalization activities. We need to expand our presence in the occupation zones and root them out. And recruit collaborators. The syndicalist states face numerous internal enemies, religious groups, liberals and conservative politicians, monarchists, and who will be willing collaborators as long as we reach out to them. We'll offer them positions in the occupied or occupation administration, prepare them for national leadership, of course, as well. Yo, anything here? Oh, some cheap trains. Eh, that's all right. Mechanized. I'm not sure if we actually use mechan any mechanized, but hey, we'll see. And it's 1944. Uh, you can do that. Why not? 50% plan and desyndicalization. As we have a cup of coffee or two. Please stop being syndicalist. Do better. <clears throat> Anything here we can read about? No, 100% is good. Uh, do local recruitment because we can. Do mobilization? No, we're pretty good overall. And then allow local elections to show our intent to leave our occupied states and return control to the citizens. We should hold regional elections and mayoral elections. Of course, only for candidate approved candidates approved by the military administration. 
It also gauges strength of our newly established collaborationist parties. Establish local party force or police local police forces. To reduce the burden on our occupation forces, we must transfer more and more duties to the local collaborators, allowing them to establish volunteer groups, a police which will fight cynical's resistance for us and also build popular trust in our occupation and restore the civilian administrations. Our hard work has paid off. And we can finally allow the election of a constitutional convention in our occupation zones, which will establish a new system of government, which means we can leave and transfer all the power to the collaborators. Of course, this does not mean that we should trust them. Great Freedom. This week, Grosse Freiheit. Great Freedom. A new blog post about Heimut Kautner. Star starring world-famous actors such as Hans Alba uh, <clears throat> and Ilse Werner, celebrated its premiere at the UFA Movie Palace in Hamburg, the largest cinema in Europe, much to the delight of the local population, as a movie storyline takes place in the Hasiatic city as well. Lauded by critics as a grand example of the poetic realism genre, the film tells the story of an aging and cynical ex fair named Johnny who spends his retirement as a singing entertainer at a club alongside along the Grosse Freiheit, a street in Hamburg's famous red-light district, St. Pauli. After he promises his dying brother to watch for the latter's girlfriend, Giza, after his death and allows a young girl, barely 20 years old, to live in his room as a housemaid, he begins to develop feelings of love for the first time in many years, albeit entirely without Giza suspecting anything, who in the meantime begins curing a shipyard worker without Johnny's knowledge. Johnny becomes so obsessed with the girl that he goes as far as proposing to her and giving up his own unstable life, but just when he bought the rings, he finds out about Giza's secret relationship. Aggrieved. <clears throat> Ashamed of disgrace, the old sea dog decided to leave his old life behind forever and brought to it again on a ship that the same night never to return. The movie's not only become widely popular because of this deeply melancholic and fatalist storyline, which captures the spirits of the wartime and era perfectly, but also due to the fantastic soundtrack. Many schlagers figured in the film, uh, like the iconic La Paul Loma and On the Reaper Bond at half past midnight, have already become instant classics and are played on the record players all over Europe. A sailor's bride is a sea, as we're really working on our naval XP. Uh, but right now we're doing recruiting collaborators. I actually went up to partial uh, partial mobilization, just cause, and yeah, things aren't getting any better really here in France. Not good. And actually, they're decent in Britain, Scotland. Scotland's okay. Scotland doesn't care. Britain, or I guess our England, uh, they have a lot of rebellions. We just set England back about a hundred years or a thousand years, really. Uh, this one next too. That'd be great. As we are just flying now on these guys down here, we've built up some supply, we're doing okay. Uh, building some radar up, uh, get some planes. Oh, hey, get look at that. Time to go. When you can, it shouldn't be too bad. And we're going to call these guys arms too. There you go. Uh, who's not giving us our, our stuff? Also, the Republic of South Africa is now in our faction. Fantastic. Ben flippin' tastic. Aluminum, huh? Uh, that's fine for now. We're helping you out anyways. I think it's clear what RGTS is. That's fine. Whatever. But yeah, we're just spreading it out through here. Be very nice. Be eating up a, literally just a bunch of camels. And the... Syria? Did you pitch it to the Americans? Hello. Ireland declared war in Northern Ireland. Nice. Irish troubles. Syria's looking okay. United States of America... That's disgusting. Yeah, I don't think they can really beat up tanks too well. We've lost almost 400 guys versus uh, almost 200,000. Well, Argentina, I totally give this to you, but I think this would probably be better with you guys. There you go. Oh, maybe not. Hmm, interesting. I'll put them on the board. We're going to lose a lot of tanks doing this, but whatever. Boop, boop. Boop, 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 There you go. Should be all right. And we're back in peace. Lovely. And there's Northern Ireland. We get to mobilize, but we're not going to. Because we're allowed local elections. My week. Oh, I hope compliance gets higher. It's barely going up at all, though. Paris is just, oof. And we can't restore that yet. Amnesties for low-level officials. The many officials in former syndicalist administrations were diehard believers. Some were not. They only entered service for careerism or because they know their choice. Though they cannot yet be fully trusted, we can offer amnesties to some of these officials and integrate them into our occupation regime to smoothen its day-to-day -day operations. Which would be nice. Alright, what else we got here? Got more things here. Drop more things. We're almost done with all the naval stuff, which is fantastic. 
More naval stuff. Good. And yeah, we're done with that. We need to do modern tanks, but we'll get there eventually. Heavy tanks because we can. We should probably get better planes. It's 1945 already. Could demobilize if we really wanted to. We'll see. And we've got all this stuff to do as well. We read this one earlier. Christian democracy. Nope. The social role of the have. Our armed forces have always been the backbone and soul of the Prussian germination. Their function in society is to unite desperate ideas and movements beyond a common cause. Now that it's finally charged, we can make this ideology into a reality. Uh, proclaim death of German syndicalism. The focus is extinguished syndicalism in Europe will also allow you to target unaligned social democratic uh, governments. Too many social democrats have been overrun by revolutionary sympathies. It was not too long ago that traitor syndicalist organizations within our borders loudly proclaimed that Germany would fall to the Reds. Indeed, all they had contempt for were the was for the German nation and its way of life, but now they and their foreign backers have been vanquished, and Germany stands tall uh, as a vanguard of anti syndicalism now and, of course, forever. Well, I figured that, you know, we're looking pretty good. The Reichsbach's looking pretty thick, but we're not thick enough yet. There's the Dona Adria Bund, uh, but then we have these guys down here, so the Belgrade Pox got to die. We lost 21,000 people. Uh, I've cut off 24,000. Overall, not bad, but we are using our tanks in the southern front to help push us through here, if possible. Uh, it took us a while to break through the Romanian lines, but you know what? We're here, and we're just beating the crap out of them now. And they are kind of going insane by forcing the defense of everything, but we did the Schlecker Constitution. The Second Valkyrie has been won for the second time. The Imperial German Army has vanquished opponents on the west and on the east. Uh, <clears throat> and this time enshrined its hegemony over Europe for good. Having led the Empire during its darkest hour, the Reich's Chancellor, Karl von Schlecker, has thus earned everlasting fame and a place in the pantheon of German heroes, a position he immediately put to use for his advantage. He should not waste his immense political capital. Not when his status as a war hero would allow him to finalize the creation of a strong, or stronger and more consolidated German Empire without any protest. A, ses a session at the Reichstag has been called, where thanks to endorsement much from, from much of the political spectrum, Schleicher required an enormous majority for constitutional changes, and thus he presented a list of amendments, drafted by a team of jurists led by Karl Schmidt, Hans Luther, and Wilhelm von Geyer, who would drastically restructure the constitutional framework. The Bundesrat was to be abolished at last, replaced by the Standekammer, Chamber of Estates, a corporatist upper house composed of representatives from professional organizations. The powers of the states were drastically weakened, and the central government assumed a superior position over them. But the civilian cabinets were not free from control either. An infamous clause was added to the Constitution, which effectively allowed the Supreme Command of the Head to veto a cabinet member's approval, thus giving the military an immense amount of control over civilian policy. The dreams of the centralizers were achieved at last. The meddling and complaints of the states would never now be able to hold back a powerful central government in Berlin, but at what cost? To a stronger German Empire. Oh, the Belgrade Pact. Uh, they've tried. But with our almost 50,000 casualties, we've, we've eliminated about over a third of a million. And the tanks are rolling in, doing a fantastic job with our uh, motorized. Even though I'm sure we could expand the motorized a little bit more, too. Although we got here. 18 combat with is okay. We do have a cup of coffee here to keep us nice and warm. Truck drawn artillery, huh? For now, these guys are looking pretty good. We're going to go with that. And support our rockets. Rangers. Rangers would be nice. You know what? You're. Ooh. Well, that actually slows down. That would actually that would actually would slow us down. That's not cool. Cavalry would slow us down too. Motorized recon. I guess that makes sense. And signal companies, logistics. Ooh, anti tank would be nice too. Some piercing. I'm gonna go with initiative. With signals. They never do that. Motorized anti tank, just in case. A uh, nice solid 25 combo with would be decent. Logistics, good. Better logistics, good. Happy 1945, everybody. Pushing and pouring through all the borders as much as we possibly can. Sophia. Lost 50,000 versus 400,000. The tanks are struggling a little bit here. And there goes oh, Romania. Very good. At this point, you're all going to just have a soft front line through here. However, I will need you to finish your uh, war goals here. And you, you guys can finish this. Ah, the destruction of the Serbian army. And a few Bulgarian armies, or units too. Beautiful. I guess we're doing this. We might as well take these guys out too, maybe. Which are 10 days. We have no war spot. That's pretty normal. 
Uh, negotiate with these guys. No, nah, war propaganda up. Sure, why not? Why not? We got political power for it, so it's okay. Watch out, they declared war on the Triple Atania. Back in Eskuma too. Oh, yeah, that's true. Set and Tog, there's that, yes. Get over the river. Sophia will be gone, which means their units will be gone. The Rex Consul's old reputation. Or, or resignation. Uh, resignation. After mere days after the promulgation of the Schleicher Constitution, Schleicher announced his shocking decision to resign and retire. Though the masses and even the average member of the National Unity Front were surprised his closest associates could tell that it was a long time coming. For over a decade, Schleicher has battled a perniculous anemia, anemia, a federal disease for which an unreliable cure has only been recently developed. As early as 1930, his doctor informed him that severe overexertion could lead him to dying in six months or less. Still, with the best medicine that the German Empire could offer, he could endure the sickness until it finally became too much to bear, of course. <clears throat> By sheer uh, the Schlecker Council Circle, the Schlecker Circle will thus be required to continue the National Revolution by themselves. Few believe Schlecker is long to live. The decision on who will succeed may shape the future of German Empire for decades. Should another candidate from uh, the Hair be appointed and strengthen the regime's grip through though, through Rex Councillor uh, Ferdinand von Bredal, or should civilian rule be restored and the National Union Front be turned into a party for power, led by trustworthy bureaucrats and politicians? The Rex Council called Friedrich Gordelow. Or perhaps Schlecker's vice chancellor, if he has one, can calmly continue his directives, who will be recommended to Kaiser Wilhelm III. Von Breda will strengthen the regime. Continue the government with vice chancellor August Winnig. Called Gordelow and prove standing with the masses. Let's go with Gordelow. I don't know. Uh, Schlecker, no! Supplies are really bad, but you know, we haven't had time to build ourselves up. Very good. And I don't want to ruin any more tanks of ours, so. Um, yeah. We do have quite a few mountain passes here. Just let the infantry handle it. Infantry, yeah, pretty much just infantry. 71,000 versus almost a million casualties. Fantastic. Combat casualties really destroyed us, huh? That's all right. Do both. Thank you. You know you had a navy, huh? Additional supplies and occupation. That's fine. Hey! Oh, Kurdistan. Also, we did get the Ottoman Empire in our... I didn't tell you this, but we did get the Ottoman Empire in. Unfortunately, they're not as good as they used to be, because they lost their war quite a while ago, but you know it is what it is. And you go right there. So, now the Rax back looking even more whole. And can divvy up the Balkans even more. Actually, we're going to go with these guys anyways. Uh, you guys can help us in there, too. They're going to have very thin lines, just kind of like us, but still. Yeah, pretty much what it's got to be. Tons of supply issues are three up here. Which makes sense, unfortunately. There you go. Red Bulgaria, Serbia, Romania. What do we want the most powerful one to be? Probably Bulgaria, but they did fight us too, but... And honestly, not Serbia, because they started well, the first Valkyrie. Not Romania, because they did all that stuff. Honestly, we hate the Bulgarians the least, so... Well, after a long fight with the Bulgarians, we have launched a full offensive and forced the Bulgarian army to surrender. Sophia's now in her hands. What should we do with their lands? We're releasing a Republican? Uh, we're gonna have a Tsar. Definitely have a Tsar. Just because, uh, we have a monarchy. We may need, uh, to have marriages in the future. Automotive designers, very nice. Armor, sure, why not? Social role to have. Uh, oh, the Shogunate. Mobilization Society. I'll consolidate Turingia next. Proclaim the death of German cynicalism, abolishment of partisanship. Nothing divides society more than political parties. The fact that they only represent a part of society, rather than the holes in their name. We shall finally put an end to this despicable practice. 
or the front, which is explicitly not a party, but a union of all German nationalists, can it rep be a representative of the German people? Mobilization Society. Our Germany is like a regiment always on the march. At every turn, we must rally more resources, bring more soldiers to the army, raise more support for our cause. We must escalate our control of our daily life and erode the last limits of our power for the sake of the empire. Uh, develop jet aircraft technology. New investments in jet engine technology show promise. As well as the guesses that a plane using May, one may even... One may even be able to break the sound barrier. We must invest in this technology and develop a fleet of jet aircraft which will be able to fly circles around our enemies. The Universal Panzer. The race towards the heaviest and most powerful tank is proven to be dead, designed at M. Instead of focusing on several different variants of tanks, we should develop a tank with the speed and firepower to make both medium and heavy tanks obsolete. Civilian adoption of computing technology. The war led to an explosion of progress in computing technology. It may seem ridiculous, but one day computers may shrink to the point where they are only the size of a wardrobe. We must put computers to use in our universities and research labs to make use of their impressive capabilities. Oh, enhancement, enhanced mobilization strategies. Ooh. Well, the Stadt Commissar system. It's time to put an end to the weakness that is a federal system. All state governments will be replaced by commissars, much like the one we established in Bavaria after their insurrection. Once the government, these governments are removed by force, we can start merging into Spanish states until we end up with a rational map of powerless state units. Yes. Encouraged by the government in Berlin. <clears throat> the representatives of the small Thuringian states, Saxe Weimar Eisenach. Saxe Meiningen, Saxe Altenburg, Saxe Goldberg, Gotha, Schwarzburg, Sonderhausen, Schwarzburg, Rudolfstadt, and the two principalities of Reuss gathered in the city of Weimar to deliver on the unification of these small monarchies into one Thuringian state. The partition of Thuringia into statelets, each with their own government and laws, has held back the development and progress of the state for quite some time, and finding a resolution to this division has been on the mind of politicians pursuing centralization for a while. After some time, and a lot of pressure from Berlin, a workable agreement has been found. A united Thuringia will be established in Grand Duke Karl August II of Saxe and Weimar Eisenach. The largest of the small states will be crowned Grand Duke of Thuringia, however. The other princes will retain their property and their lineages will be represented in the upper house of Thuringian Landtag, alongside appointed and elected peers. The lower house will be elected via universal suffrage, and the government will reside in Weimar. The Thuringian constitution has been approved by all state parliaments and the necessary amendments to the constitution. It has been approved by the Bundesrat, who, and so the Grand Duchy of Thuringia has become a reality. The Green Heart of Germany is finally united. Kurt von Schlacker dies. The greatest Reich's counselor in recent history, Kurt von Schlacker, passed away in his villa in New Babelsberg, near Potsdam, from late stage pernicious anema. Schlacker spent the last few months of his life in slow and careful retirement to avoid worsening his disease, meeting with various figures in his villa, starting on his memoirs and going on a few trips with his wife. The government announced mourning on the day of his death in a massive funeral held in Berlin, attended by the Kaiser, our ex chancellor, all members of the cabinet, numerous representatives of the Heer, and the Reichstag as well as hundreds of civilians. General Kurt von Hammer Eckhard, who cherished his friendship with Schleicher in spite of them falling out, uh, had, had led a toast of 400 officers in Schleicher's honor. Schleicher did not leave any children. His marriage to his wife Elizabeth, herself the daughter of General Victor von Hedings, was a political one. Her good looks and charm earned the Schleicher's admiration in social events and allowed her husband to connect with influential figures. And he himself wrote that he needed a certain amount of support from the female wisdom and feminine tact in his work. In his work. However, he leaves behind a legacy that will shape the future of Germany for a century or more. So long and later, goodbye. Thank you for being here as we now go to war with these guys. Uh, you do share a border. Also, we did make uh, Bulgaria pretty large. Uh, we'll call, call the Italians into the Poles and the Ukrainians. So they are attacking immediately. Oh, you probably want to stop training. That probably would be nice. Can we do this? Can we do this? Did we actually get the... We didn't get the cryptology done. Well, that's not good. My bad. Oh, well. Well, whatever. Let's see what we can do. We're going to be all over the place here. Quite literally. More green. We should have quite a few planes in the air in a moment. Oh, yeah. I forgot about Greece. Well, we got a lot of allies here to help us out with that. So, But we're moving in through Poland pretty quickly. How are the tanks doing? Deutsches Weltreich. Happy January, 1946, everybody. Uh, we're going to continue on with this stuff down here. Opposition Society, what is this? Uh, absolutely just smashing through some of these enemies. Uh, do we really, really care about? Eliza Al Alyasa Bazna. Cool. As soon as I place them there, they're done. Fantastic. We've lost 20,000. We've killed off 102,000. Wow. They're doing naval production. 
They're on service by requirement. Carl, at first, I'm sorry you had it coming to you. Uh, sure. Sure. That'll help our war support. Please crack down. More stability. We don't need that at all, but we're also going to do the political power. I already went back to up to partial mobilization. Uh, declare war in Paraguay, huh? Oh, these guys are all cut off. Oh, God. Quite dastardly. Oh, boy. Oh, the humanity. Obviously, we're not winning every front, but there's just a lot of divisions in, in its mountains. It's very tough to fight through there. Half a million are dead. Versus our 50,000. Finishing them up in the uh, east here. And they just threw more divisions in there because they were retreating. Vienna is a frontline city. And it's about to fall. German military administration. Fantastic. Follow Vienna. Vienna is finally ours. They have a couple planes. We have about 3,600 planes. I've been throwing a lot of planes everywhere, though. They're not all doing stuff. They're disappointing. Hello? Are you doing anything here? No? Okay, well then you're deleted. Half a million, I assume like maybe a thousand, hundred thousand casualties in total. You've killed off almost a million of them within a month. Within, or not even a month, like two weeks. Can you imagine a million people dying within like three weeks in total? Oh, cut off. Good job, Ukrainian horses. Oh no, they declared war. Why would you do that? You've already lost over a million. Of course, we still gotta deal with the Greeks, but. Wait, do we really need to deal with them? No, we don't. I'm not gonna war them, anyways. I get this quite a negative score. Thank you. Thank you. Yep. Looking good. Good. Beautiful. So now we got to finish these guys off. I'll have you guys come down here because you do have two things of Mountaineers. Shouldn't be god awful, but it'd be probably pretty bad down here, not gonna lie. Uh, you have no ports, which is not a good idea. Group equipment co conversion, you guys. I really don't know where to put you. Maybe Portugal here? I don't know. Maybe. Your supply is going to be pretty bad, but still. Something like that, maybe. Made Austria. Revised the German Romanian border. After the annexation of Galicia and Lomeria, we've taken control <coughs> of the former Duchy of Bukovina. The territory has been traditionally governed by the Moldavian elite, uh, though the demographics have shifted greatly during the past century. The southern parts are still strongly Romanian, and if a plebiscite is arranged, we'll probably join Romania. Bucharest has asked us to allow a regional referendum in exchange for some trade agreements beneficial to us. No. After what Romania did to us from this last war, you know, from before the Velkrieg, absolutely not. I guess we could have taken out the Japanese eventually, but whatever. I want a lot of armored cars. I like the armor. Yeah, we're doing fine. We're just walking into them. <sighs> Return to Italian lands. Uh, we'll see. Mobilization of society. Abolishment of partisanship. And eventually, you'll have to read more. Focuses, too. Such as, I mean, we can do all this, but we don't really need to. 
Um, Unity of Army and State, even after Schleicher, and if we return power back to civilian Reich's counselors, must ensure that the Ham, as a social guide of the state, always retains power over state operations. They must be allowed to veto government actions and Reich's counselor appointments, and society must serve to support the army. The state's commissar system, which we read earlier. Uh, what is this? Hans Zerra, the Spiritual Reconstruction Forces. Together with uh, heavy industry advocates in the Hugenberg Group, we will establish an association for promotion of spiritual reconstruction forces. A business association which will finance, propaganda, and expand control over the media to ensure that the people only hear what we want them to hear. Nice. It's fine, whatever. Who do we need for that? Hans Zerra. I mean, Kostschmidt. Preussentum on Socialismus. In truth, the German people are inherently socialistic, not the vile anarchy of the syndicalists or the Marxists, no, but the sense of community, discipline, productivity, and self sacrifice through which they devote all their, to the nation. Let us turn us into a tenet of our new regime's ideology. In a new Germany, everyone, business, and work will be, work for the common good. Oh, that's not bad. Bosch? Good, no? Schmidt from Bredow. Disband the Bundesrat. The Schlager Constitution has abolished Bundesrat, but now we need to finalize the process by moving all of its former duties to the courts and cooperatist representative bodies. We should never give the state such a representation again. That much is certain. The Shogunate. Kaiser so has theoretically the ability to remove us from power and to back or take over the state. Let's put an end to the threat by forcing him to surrender almost all of his executive power. I'll return the monarchy to the throne, but it'll be powerless. All decisions will be done by a sprawling dictatorial clique. Our clique centered around the National Unity Front and the heirs to our ex councillor Schleicher. That'd be great. That would be awesome. Defend states' rights, huh? Well, I can't quite do that one. I would like to restore the civilian administration, but can't quite do that, can we? Lithuanian decouples from us. Our embassy in Vilnius is worrying news that the Lithuanian nations headed to our great autonomy. Our shared economy, found it harder to manage in eight countries of Eastern Europe, it turns out the Lithuanian economic reforms have drawn them farther away from the Reichsback than closer. Uh, while they're still under our protection and our financial control, Lithuania experiences a greater degree of freedom. While this may not be a significant concern for us, as they are still under our control, it's perhaps it's time that we must strengthen our eastern borders. Those balls have been nothing but trouble. We'll see for how long. Alright, we're gonna talk about Austria here too. As it should be. Look at that, it's a thick Bulgaria. Now let's see what we're going to do with them first. Wow, 365 ships. Holy crap, who did we take this from? Oh, it must have been from the, uh, the Austrians. Jesus Christ. Well, thanks for the Navy. Don't really need it, but you know what? Thanks for it, anyways. Oh, you know we're going to do this one instead. Let's release some people in. Fate of Austria. Austria has been forced to capitulate, and our troops are patrolling the streets of Vienna, preventing a rebellion of anything that could cause further instability. However, some propose that creating a local Austrian government would be more helpful. Ah, some of them to our territory. Oh, yeah. The Archduchy of Austria. I mean, is that really makes a lot of sense for us? No, God, no, of course not, but at this point, might as well. Ever since the Prusso-Austrian War of 1866, uh, the German-speaking lands of Austria and the Bohemia were fated to be excluded from United Germany. In spite of this, sympathies for the greater German solution remained on both sides of the border. The black-red gold flag of the 1848 revolution inadvertently became one of the symbols of greater Germany, as opposed to the black-red-white of the German Empire. 
The Pan-German League in Berlin and Greater German People's Party in Wien kept the idea alive and tried to unite with their respective far right in spite of this. Even social democratic politicians expressed their sympathies for unification. Now has been achieved. The dreams of Greater Germany met cold reality. Austria is the newest addition into the federal structure of the German Empire. Its large size, surpassing even Bavaria, means that the once constitution is amended to include Austria and are likely to receive a large number of Bundesrat votes, perhaps even eight or nine. Already, Prussian politicians are concerned that this will lead to a large Catholic bloc in the Bundesrat that can match Prussia and destabilize lawmaking in the chamber. The fate of the Austrian army, whether it be integrated or received independent status such as the Bavarian counterparts, is also in question, as well as other numerous concessions in economic and political affairs. The negotiations on Austria's integration are not going to be easy. The House of Habsburg has been invited to assume the throne of the Archduchy of Austria, thus being required to surrender their imperial status and accept subordination to the Hohenzollerns. Needless to say, this will cause resentment in the family as well as among the Austrian people still overall the masses in both Germany and Austria are jubilant. Deutsch Österreich du herrliches Land wer lieben dich. Well, my bad, I didn't mean to really do that. I didn't even think about that. I was just like, hey, we're just gonna eat ya. Uh, in integratable territories. Well, that's cool. That's all on default. That's awesome. that's actually awesome. I love that. So then, of course, they Greece. Liberate the Kingdom of Greece. Yes. Nice. The relief sent. Yogos the second. Ah, monarchies. Oh wait, we still have one person here who needs to be taken out. And it's Albania. I gave him Kosovo, I guess, for some reason. Not sure why. I don't think I need this many armies for this group, but you know, we'll see. Fantastic. Spiritual reconciliation. Association for the promotion of spiritual reconstruction forces, huh? Nuclear reactors. I think we'll have maybe one more episode after this. Fate of Croatia, Hungary, Bohemia, Sutarol. The southern part of the former county of Tyrol is predominantly home to Italians. Now we've taken control of the territory, we must decide what to do with it. Of course. The Aegean Macedonia, fate of Bohemia. The ancient heartland of the Czechs has been conquered by our victorious forces. The venerable gym of the Vlatava River, Prague, is occupied by our troops who parade smartly across the Venceslas Square. Should proper Czech government lower the designs of our own state or maintain the splendid military occupation? Well. Fate of Hungary. The Hungarian nation has been completely defeated. Forces are placed in the streets of Budapest, and partisans are being detained all across the countryside. Uh. We should see the affairs of my permit. We should. What should we do with Hungarian lands? Yeah, I really some. The reorganization of the party system. Now that Austria is being integrated into the German Empire, parties of the former Habsburg Empire are being absorbed into the German party system. Some winning considerably, others losing out, of course. The integration of the SBA, SDAP into the SPD went without any issues. The two parties had already had a close working relationship for decades, as well as intellectual sharing. Uh, after all, both Karl Skalski and Ludolf Hilfdering. Elferding, who were massively important to the intellectual development of the SPD, comes from Austria. Similar to the CSB began negotiations with Zentrum on unification, but they faced several key issues. Prolonged negotiations on Austria's integration into the Empire, which raised concerns about the loss of Austrian identity within Germany, as well as CSB's more conservative outlook meant that the merger was incomplete. Much like the Bavarian People's Party and the Luxembourg Party of the Reich, the CSB becomes an autonomous part of the Zentrum, it retains its leadership and freedom of action within Austria, but the Reichstag members, once they are elected, will caucus with the Zentrum. The GDVP, meanwhile, followed the lead of the Christian Social Homeland Party of alsace Lorraine and became an autonomous part of the DVLP again. In spite of the ideological similarities, various conflicts bubbling within, as well as DVLP's largely Protestant leadership, meant that the merger was incomplete. The other parties ultimately received little. LVP absorbed the minor Demokraten, while the Deutsche Volkswirtschaftspartei stayed around as a minor party in Austria. It's assumed that Zentrum and SPD will benefit the most of the Union with Austria, which stings a little to the far right Pan Germans who had championed the cause of Greater Germany the most. Expected, of course. After a short campaign across the mountains of Slovakia, we've managed to uh, shatter the defenses of the country. Slovakia's now in our hands. No, we can do with them. This looks disgusting. Fede Galicia. At, uh, Liberate Galicia. Give it a post people give Ukrainian state. Ooh. Can, oh, oh my god, this is not good. Fede Galicia. Poland wants that. Can I split it between the two? We could do a friendly government, but I don't want any more puppets. Polish Republic. Three... Ukraine has been here for the longest, and I don't want to see the giantest Ukraine ever. My 
God, that is a thick Ukraine. Jesus Christ, that's awesome. Sorry, Poland. But you pissed us off earlier, so what do you want? Aegean and Macedonia. Uh, I don't want... Bulgaria did piss us off earlier, but we killed these guys off too. You know what? We're going to continue to go with Bulgaria. Croatia. Uh, a Croat state? I, Serbs? You didn't like the Serbs. They caused that war. We want a strong Croatian state then. So, Ivo Pilar. These guys. Greece. Bulgaria is nice and thick right now. At least for now. Romania is too big. I don't like how big they are. So, you got a lot of little states here. Okay, Pressburg. Uh, part, formerly part of the Kingdom of Hungary, the city of Pressburg is home to the Slovaks, Germans, and Hungarians alike. I must have said we do that. Uh, assimilated. Sirmia. Sir Croatia. Croatia. Oh, God. Dalmatia. Italian Empire. Um, the Italians, you know what? I'm going to reward the Italians because they will help us out the most since the beginning. Uh, Chalcidus, so the Macedonia. Uh, uh, yeah, you can have that, I guess. Bosnia. Uh, you know what? I don't want that many puppets. <sighs> this makes no sense to give Croatia Bosnia, but we'll do it anyways. Bukovina. Give it to Romania. Give it to the Ukrainian state. Split it between them. Oh, yeah. Transcarpathia. Oh, yeah. And Slovenia. Assimilated. So, yeah, let's do more territories around here. I really don't like this. The Nubian Plain. Can we get rid of this and give this to Hungary? This is really awful. Oh, there goes Armenia. Good job, Ottoman Empire. Uh, hey, at least you guys got territory here, too. Any more? Yes. Trieste? Uh, no, we're going to assimilate it. The Nubian Plain. Hungary, you can have that. Ah, okay, that's so much better. Jesus Christ, that's better. Kotor, like, that's one of the greatest games ever. Um, uh, tiny, uh, yeah. There you go. Western Thrace. Um, honestly, the Ottomans helped us out more, but I want to see a giant Bulgaria. Split between the Kingdom of Greece and Bulgaria. The Kingdom of Greece and the Ottoman Empire. I guess we could have given it to Bulgaria too, but this is getting really ugly. I should have given this to Bulgaria. My bad. Vojvodina. Uh, give it a hungry. I still want to make them big. Association for the Promotion of Spiritual Reconstruction of Forces. Alfred Hugenberg, leading financier of the Father Long Party and the chief of the influential Hugenberg group, has long been a troublemaker within the German far right. And Schleicher. Uh, maintain his distance from him, suspicious of the hamster's intentions, or lack of his political competence. Now that he's passed away, however, his successor is much more willing to extend a hand to Hugenberg, especially as a businessman and newspaper monopolist that has become aware that the National Unity Front dictatorship has the closest thing that Germany has come to his vision. After negotiations, the Reichskanzler and Hugenberg came to an agreement. The Hugenberg Group will receive the full endorsement of the state and will be financed by a 12-man committee of leading industrialists and government representatives, the so-called Association for the Promotion of Spiritual Reconstruction Forces. This unwieldy name refers to the business association's goals of promoting nationalism, since of belonging to the Volksgemeinschaft and spreading propaganda in order to reconstruct the German national spirit. Over time, this means that the government's message will grow increasingly reactionary, ethno-nationalist, and anti-Semitic. Let's also not forget that this fairly blatant case of corruption is certain to inspire imitators, abuse of the regime's friendly relationship with national capitalists to enrich themselves. But that is something future generations will have to worry about, not us. The media will say what we want uh, to hear. What's been at? Not Romania. Serbian Republic? Uh, no. Hungary. And Istria. That's what I do. And Ruzjek. Nice. I think that's it. Hey, that's fantastic. So this is the first epilogue episode. And the next one, I think it'll be the last one, just finish up a few little details here and there. Epilogue 2, you know. Um, but yeah, that's looking pretty good. Hungary's here, Serbia's here, Bulgaria's nice and thick, Greece is okay, Romania's too thick, and Croatia here to keep balancing the power, balance of power here in the Balkans. And uh, the Ottoman Empire got slightly thicker too. So now, we gotta just have the Albanians. Ugh. And I guess we still have the Entente and Ireland technically here too. We might take out Ireland. I don't know, we'll see. We're guaranteeing them. We're gonna revoke the guarantee. We can justify them too. 165 days, that's quite a few days. Is it not? 
Eh, we'll do this one, disband the Bundesrat. Uh, the strike of constitution is abolished as Bundes Rap, but now it needs to finalize the process by removing all of its former oh, oh, oh. The duties to give to courts and the corporate representative bodies. We should never give the sa state such representat representation again, that much is certain. After reigning for 53 years, Prince, Prince Friedrich von Waldeck Permont has peacefully passed away today at the age of 81. Despite his lacking charisma and barely existing political legacy, Friedrich achieved what many German monarchs have dreamt of. He now is officially the longest reigning sovereign in the 75 year long history of the German Empire, surpassing even the legendary Bill II by just a few weeks, something that probably makes the Turtle Kaiser turn in his, turn in his grave. The great insignificance of Prince Friedrich can be attributed not only to the fact that the Valdeck is one of Germany's smallest and least populous constituent states, but also to Valdeck's extreme dependency on Prussia. Due to a controversial treaty signed in 1867, as a principal, he was not able to cover the yearly matricular contributions every member state has to pay. The prince was turned into an irrelevant figurehead, while the internal administration was taken over by the Prussians from the nearby castle in Hanover. On several occasions, outright dissolution of Valdeck Piermont was on the table, in part because activists in Bad Piermont, who have not much in common with their rulers in Arlson, called for unification with the Prince of Hanover, but these plans were always came to nothing. It would be due to the Friedrich Sloan, but Josias of Valdeck Piermont to steal the tiny principality through New Era, Memento Mori. Showing out which I think I read. Yeah. We read this one too. Uh, extinguish syndicalism. In Europe, Germany submitted itself as the first and foremost fighter against syndicalist intrusion across Europe. Previous blunders allowed socialist movements to proper, prosper and wreak havoc ever since 1925, and like dominoes, one country fell to revolution after another. We should be clear that the same mistake will not be repeated again. Enforced ideological loyalty in the East. Unlike the first Valkyrie, the second was a great struggle not just for economic or military supremacy, but ideological supremacy as well. Nowhere was this more pronounced than in the West, but in the East things remained much of the same of the old, with the alliances simply based around national security. In some changes, our class states in the East shall follow Berlin's ideals. Overthrow the legionary government, if you want to read this one, please go ahead, because we did this one already. Secure the Balkan region. Uh, the Balkans are one of the greatest areas of strategic, strategic value, having important allies that will bolster access to the Mediterranean. For some time, this aim has been hindered by governments unwilling to work with Germany, but as an undisputed master of Europe, we will be able to settle such matters. Restore control of the Suez, oh boy. The Suez Canal remains the most direct link between European and Asian trade, while for a time remained open to us, its occupation by foreign powers meant that at any time could, uh, access could be cut off. Though any of our adversaries may dismiss as a seizure of it, we'll be ready to defend our interests, and return to the East Indies. It's an unfortunate matter that opportunist powers sought to strike our Asian holdings when we were fighting in Europe, making it difficult to keep them, but we shall not suddenly stray from what was rightfully ours. The resource-rich area of the East Indies will be back under control if we have anything to say about it, and of course, we do. Papa Kaiser. Um, how many more days do we have until we can beat the crap out of Albania? Ah, two weeks. It's not bad. A couple more tanks. Um, how many modern tanks do we have? 600, huh? Major unrest in cynical territories. If you heard this, please go ahead. What do we got here? There you go. Hardness. And there you go. You first. There you go. Intervention of the Persian Gulf. If there's anything uh, that the Persian Gulf is known for, it's an abundance of oil. And that's enough for a reason for our presence, as it is oil that is the lifeblood of the Empire. But the last one of this episode, we shall go in and smash the Albanians. Simple. Easy. Should be no problem. Should literally be no problem. And some places don't even have divisions to help hold the line. We've lost 100. We've killed off 37,000. Fantastic. Good. Hopefully we can help out France and England and whatnot. Can we have a peace deal, please? Maybe? There we go. I guess Serbia took Kosovo away from us. How sad. But hey, if you enjoyed the video, please consider leaving a like. Subscribe if you're new. Check out my Discord link in the description below. And I'll see you tomorrow as we will uh, finish up this campaign. Thanks for watching. Have a great rest of your day.